first of several how-to short videos I'm going to do. Just give you some tips on things that you can do at home that will help you maybe in the future practicing at home or helping somebody you know or also during travel and taking advantage of some things that you have at home that you may not have in the studio. And the first one we're going to start with is one of the most basic poses, child's pose. But believe it or not, there are things to learn about child's pose that people tend to not think about. Um, this first one, we're going to do like a chair yoga version of it. If you think you're not interested, then just skip ahead. But also, even if you think you're not, it's still useful to know if you're traveling or working with people who maybe have injuries or issues they can't get down on their knees, or you yourself, um, some period when you can't get down on your knees. So, um, the things I have here are two chairs, folding chairs, a bolster, and two blocks. Um, you can always use dictionaries, phone books instead of blocks, and you can use a folded up, uh, small, like, uh, like um, lap size blanket, um, or if you happen to have the right shape pillow, sometimes you do for a sofa or something like that. Um, and so you'll see. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit this over here for the time being. This would be a basic um, child's pose uh, using chairs. And you can just come forward, um, opening your knees to like they're like mats with, or just hugging on either side or just outside the seat and coming forward. Uh, let me go through that more mindfully. So sitting up tall, hinging at the hips, coming forward. So you're getting the stretch from the lower back as you come forward. So I'm trying not to do this. I'm not rounding the back. I'm bringing the chest forward. With, you know, child's pose is a forward fold. And with all forward folds, there's sort of an element of back bend in it. It's the opposite of what you might think. So it's bringing the chest forward instead of trying to bring your nose forward. But anyway, so then you're just kind of, you can rest your chin on your hands. You can, ideally, you would bring the center of the forehead down onto your hands. And just chill there for a while. Um, you can also hold the back of the seat and come forward. Again, trying to bring the center of your forehead down and letting your um, shoulders relax. You want to, if at all possible, press this third eye down, the center of the forehead, because that helps release the, the um, oh, I'm, I'm touching my face again. <laughs> That's why I do that. You want to release the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation response, and that's partly by touching the center of the border, letting it relax. Uh, it's connected to the vagus nerve, and it's the other side of the nervous system that the alarm nervous system, the fight or flight, anxious stuff. And one of the reasons we're talking about child's pose right now is because we all need to chill. We're all kind of nervous. And so going into your own little safe spot in child's pose, whether you need to do a chair or you can get down onto your knees, it's all good. We could all benefit. So those were the two ways of hinging at the hips, coming forward, breathing and relaxing once you're here. You could also come down onto sort of like one cheek or the other, and then also holding back here. And it's also how you can do shavasana on a chair or two chairs um, at the end of a practice. Or say you're traveling, maybe you can get two chairs to before you. Now, some people can't come forward that much. Um, their backs don't relax that much or they just don't have the stretch. They're just starting new or coming back to yoga. And in that case, you can just come down onto the, this cushion and find a place to relax your head and relax and you get a lot of the same benefits. If that's where you need to be, then that's what you want to do. So that's an option. Um, and then we're going to go do it now without the chairs and also see again how you might use the um, bolsters and the blocks. So I'm just going to set the uh, chairs aside for now. Let's see this aside. And okay, so again, this is for people who can get down on their knees, not everybody can. You want to um, 
bring the knees to mat's width, sitting up tall. So you want to still think like mountain pose, um, that the, the shoulders are stacked over the hips, the neck is nice and long, the chin is a little bit tucked into the, th the throat, so you have this nice long spine. Now here's one of the really good tips I learned a while ago. Um, and it's particularly for those of us who have a little more flesh on our legs. Um, you can lift up, take your thumbs, and move, kind of move the calves out of the way. It helps you come down flatter on the thighs and then stretching out your hands so that you're kind of coming down. I want to get the blocks out of the way. So you're just coming down and getting that nice length from through the spine from the fingertips down to the tailbone and notice my elbows are raised so what does that remind you of it's very similar to coming up into down dog there's a very close relationship between child pose and down dog so i always encourage you to think about that of having nice wide webbed hands pressing through the fingers, the finger mounds and the heels of the hands, having that engagement, keeping the elbows lifted and feeling that stretch all the way down. Because often we're doing down dog fast, it's in a flow, and you don't get to really think about the form that much. And this is good, so you'll get your lots of the maximum benefits, because I think down dog is really much more about the upper body. The hamstring part of it, um, you know, walking the dog and so forth. We can get that in so many other ways and so many other poses. And you want to get that stretch. Anyway, you can also get it in child's pose here. So this is really fallen leaf pose. It's not exactly child's pose. But we often call it child's pose. Um, and you're pressing the chest, belly through the legs and coming down. Again, trying to set the center of the forehead down. So there's this contact of tush on heels. I think I was a little bit lifted there, but there's tush on heels and the center of the forehead. Lots of length through the back body, which is not something else it has in common with down dog. We are lengthening through the back body. Okay, so you can modify this in various ways. A lot of people they're, um, they don't have the stretch yet in the lower back. Um, and you can have a thin bolster between the heel and the tush, and that can help you get the length that you need to come down. Um, and then you may not need all this after a while. Maybe you can graduate to fold it up, beach blanket or something else. So I'm gonna move that out of the way for now. Um, other people, um, have the issue that um, their head doesn't come down all the way. In which case, you can just bring the floor up to you with a block under the center of the forehead. And actually, I have to tell you, that feels kind of nice. <laughs> so that's good to do. So you can adjust. You may have to have something underneath and something in front also. It's all good. You want to work with your body and the stretch that you need to help you feel good and get these wonderful benefits of kind of benefits of going into your own little private space in child's pose. Okay, so I mentioned that was fallen leaf. This is fallen leaf. And it has a lot in common with sleeping pigeon, where the arms are stretched out and you're trying to get that, you're kind of surrendering to the mat and getting that stretch. Um, actual child's pose, the hands are back here. It's similar to like a very basic um, headstand, a rabbit pose. And so you're coming back here. And so you're holding on to the uh, heels of the hands, pressing the chest forward. And so the shoulders are more relaxed. They're more stretched like this and more relaxed like this. One is not better than the other. In fact, some teachers may prefer and teach one or the other. Um, in your own home practice, which everyone sort of has now, right? Um, you may want to do one or the other. You prefer one or the other. Again, it's all good. Um, go to your own private place and do what you want to do to come into yourself, particularly if you're feeling very nervous about what's going on. 
maybe someone close to you is sick or you feel yourself you're getting sick or whatever it is you know go into your child place and your child's pose and go into your own private space and chill you can meditate there you can just take a moment you can come to your breath whatever you want to do no one's going to tell you what to do um i think that was mostly what i want to say oh i can say one more thing some people have a very detailed pose they're very stretched out um, and they might want to go deeper. There's a couple ways you can do that. Um, you can, oh, there's that train. Uh, you can tense your fingers and come up much higher on the fingertips, and you'll feel that stretch through the shoulders and the armpits, and it's kind of nice. You can, again, web the hands, pressing down, you'll feel that different. And you can also lift the fingers, um, stretching through the back of the wrist. And this is very good for carpal tunnel. And you really feel that across the shoulders differently. And you can move through it. You can also go to one side and the other, kind of pressing your um, belly against your thigh and getting a stretch also through the side um, body at the same time and going through the three hand positions. warming up the body that way and something else you can do is taking your blocks and stretching through that way your forehead probably won't come down maybe it will it'll be a more of a back bend more like let me see if i can do that i'm going to again press that flesh out to the side using my exhale coming down pressing the chest down and so it's more like puppy pose yeah and stretching it's a much bigger stretch of the shoulders breathing into it that's gonna feel really good to some people who have very flexible backs um, and a way to come down deeper if you want to go further so this was just a quick shot a uh, quick overview of some things you can do with child's pose you see there's a lot more to it then what we usually think when you're told just go to the mat go into child's pose there's a lot of ways to kind of play it so have fun with it and check you out later namaste